Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Kelly, and today we're going to be talking about classifying triangles in a hierarchy based on properties. So before we get into that, I thought we'd better make sure that we understand what we mean when we're talking about hierarchies. So I made you a sample one here. So hierarchies are used to show relationships where the most general group goes on the top, and then the groups get more specific as you move down. So let's take a look at this. So here we've got Celine school students, and they're in the biggest group. Inside of that, a subcategory could be heritage students. Are heritage students Celine school students? They are. Are all Celine school students heritage students, though? No. So this is a subcategory. And then within that subcategory, there's Team Kelly students. So are all Team Kelly students heritage students? Yes. And are all Team Kelly students Celine School students? Yes. But are all of you who are listening Team Kelly students? No. So you see how this is a hierarchy? Here's the big general group. And we can break it down getting into smaller subcategories. And I can show it this way. And I can show it this way. They mean the same thing. I just wanted you to see two different styles of how you could do that. So that's an example of a hierarchy. When we talk about it for triangles, we're thinking about how can we classify triangles or sort triangles. So here's a picture that has a lot, 16, 4 by 4, 16 different triangles on it. And if I was going to classify those or sort those into groups, what kind of different groups might I create? Maybe you can pause the video for a second and try and come up with a couple different groups. And when you've done that, come on back. So here are some of the sample sorts that I came up with. We could put triangles that have right angles in a group. And you can see that I would have this one, and this one, and this one, and this one too. Anytime they have the little right angle symbol, right? Those would all be in that subcategory. Or I could do triangles without right angles, and then you know I'm going to do all of the other ones that don't have the right angle symbol. I could do triangles with all sides the same length. And you know when you see these hash marks, that's what these little marks are he here are. This one has one single mark on each side. That means those are all the same length. Versus this one that shows the two, meaning these two sides are the same length, but this one is not the same length. So if I'm looking for triangles with all sides the same length, I'd have to have one that has all sides marked with the same amount of tick marks. So I've got this one, and this one, and this one. I think that's it. I could look at triangles with two sides the same length. So I've got this one. <clears throat> And this one, and this one, right? Or triangles with all sides a different length. So I know I've got that one because they have one, two, three marks on them, right? They're all different for sure. All right. Okay, so now that you can think of that, could I think of triangles that would fit into more than one of those sorts that I just talked about? Think about that for a second. Jot some notes for yourself, and then when you're ready, come on back. So some overlapping sorts that I came up with. I could put triangles in groups that have two sides with the same length, and they, are, they have a right angle. So if you take a look at the different possibilities over here, triangles with two sides the same length, right? So two sides the same length that also have a right angle. So this one would fall into that overlapping sort, right? And then a triangle with a right angle, a different sort that I could choose, an overlapping sort. Triangles with right angles and triangles with all different side lengths. So this one doesn't fit that anymore. I couldn't do that one. But is there a triangle that has a right angle and all of the sides are a different length? Well, that's what we would assume this one would be. It's not marked, so we would assume they're different lengths. It has a right angle, different lengths. So I have a couple of them that could fall into more than one. 
And today we're going to learn a new way of classifying triangles into overlapping groups. We're going to make that hierarchy that I was talking about. So could you see that I could have my big category being triangles, shapes that have three sides and three angles, and all of those would fit into that overarching, the big group, right? I could break them down into a subcategory of isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles are triangles that have at least two sides equal in length. So if I sort through all of the different ones, I would be left with these six that have at least two sides equal in length. I could break that down even further though because some of these have yet another attribute and that would be those that are equilateral triangles, triangles with all three sides the same length. So that would just give me these three. But these three are also isosceles triangles, right? And they're also triangles in general. So they could fit, this one can fit also in this, right? It has to. So make sure that you understand how that concept goes. So if all the shapes in a category have a particular property, what do you know about all the shapes in a subcategory of that category? Well, all the shapes in that subcategory would also have to have that property, right? That's what we were just proving to ourselves with the triangles in the hierarchy. So let's see if you can do a little work for yourself here now. So can you come up with another true statement from the hierarchy for each of the statements below? So if I say all isosceles triangles have at least two angles with the same measure, what else would have to be true if this is true, which it is? Think about that. Jot something down for yourself. And then all triangles have at least two acute angles, acute little angles between 1 and 89, right? Acute angles. So what has to be true if all triangles have that? What else could you put? When you think you have an answer for each of these, come on back and see if they happen to be the same ones I came up with. Here's some ones that I said. So for this one, all isosceles triangles have to have at least two angles with the same measure, I could say, well, then this also has to be true. All equal equilateral triangles have at least two angles with the same measure, right? If, if this is true, this is a subgroup of that, this has to be true too. And for the all triangles have at least two acute angles, I could say all isosceles triangles or all equivalent triangles, either, both, have at least two acute angles, right? Because if the top group has it, so do the ones that are below in the hierarchy. All right, I hope that all makes sense to you. And that's it for this lesson.